Now we have the servo pocket cleared out, best fit to make the shirt, make sure the servo fits. And you want to make sure that the, um, the servo extension is all the way underneath the surface of the foam such that when you put on the filler and then sand the filler back, you don't um, sand through one of these wires. Okay? Um, and you can kind of see how I threaded it there so that it comes out in the hole that we have there. But test fit it, make sure everything fits. And then go ahead and apply a layer of goop inside the pocket. Okay? And then on the part of the servo that is contacting the pocket. So I'll do that real quick and then, yeah, just do the other wing. And then we'll be ready to start the Kevlar process, which I covered in another video. Also make sure you center the servo before you embed it in the wing. Otherwise it will be very hard to take off the horn, the arm, and uh, reposition it. I'm in the middle of spackling slash gooping the wing. While I'm at it, I went ahead and cut out a slot for the female uh, servo connector in the plywood with a Dremel and X-Acto knife. Cleaned that out, cleaned out a channel for the extension, and then went ahead and inserted the connector with goop. So I'll let that sit for six hours or so to make sure it's not going to shift when I plug in the servo. But once that's in, then I can start spackling the center section as well. While I'm in the process of prepping the wings to accept the Kevlar, I'm going to go ahead and start on the fin. The vertical stabilizer, you can see I've marked out where the spar is going to go and where it's going to end and also um, where I'm going to cut off the tip like we did on the wing tips. Okay, so you can see the spar is a little bit longer than the fin. I'm going to believe it's sitting out about one inch and that's going to help anchor the fin to the fuselage when we get to the assembly stage. The gentleman I am building this Graugans for would like an active rudder on the fin, so I went with a two and a half piece of two and a half inch piece of balsa here. If you did not want an active rudder, then I would just take like a half inch piece of trailing edge and leave the rest in foam. Just something to terminate the Kevlar on. You can see I've got the spars embedded now with Gorilla Glue. Uh, after I shape this, I will embed the spar, and then we can start the spackling process that will lead to the Kevlar application. You can see I have the cutout for the servo there. It's not a bad idea, and I didn't do this on the wing, but uh, I probably should have. It's not a bad idea to bunch up the wire in the servo pocket a little bit extra, such that if you have to replace the servo for any reason, you strip a gear or whatever, the servo quits working, that um, when you pull it out, you have extra wire to work with when you need to solder on a new servo. Okay, so that's not a bad idea. I'm going to goop this in and then I'm going to start prepping this for the Kevlar. On the center section here you can see I already started to hollow out the area in the fuse where all the electronics are going to go. It's just easier to get it started before I put it in the fuselage. And you can see the trailing edge here on the center section is it's just a half inch of balsa wood. I don't need a four inch piece like I did on the wing because it's not an active um, moving surface. So I just need something to terminate the Kevlar on. Alright, so that's the only difference in the center section and I'm going to get started with the Kevlar. The center section is done. Um, you can see I cut out the Kevlar and I cut these out with scissors to make sure I didn't slice 
the servo extensions as I was cutting through um, and I have not glassed this I'm not going to glass it until it's embedded in the fuselage and I'm glassing the rest of the fuselage along with this section um, there's no need to glass any of this as none of that will be exposed Here is the completed vertical stabilizer. You can see I've cut out the opening for the servo. I will fill that in with masking tape when I paint. And I'm not gonna cut the, um, the rudder free until I've painted it. Uh, for some reason, I just like see, being able to see the balsa wood against the paint job. It kinda just makes everything pop a little bit more. Personal preference. So you could do it now if you want and paint it and let the paint fill in the elevon or the rudder hinge and the hinge would uh, kind of disappear. So it's just personal preference. Here is the bottom ready to accept the wing. Um, you can see I've hollowed out the center of the fuselage. I've left the wing about, or the wing, I've left the fuselage about an inch thick, the wall, and that should be more than enough. If you need any more, you can always hollow it out later after the halves are joined. And I've also, I haven't hollowed this out as much as I could. I definitely want to make sure I don't over hollow it and get thin spots in the wall. Here you can see the really on the outside the only the only place the cut needs to be perfect is right along the mark. Anything below that, make sure you either cut vertically or cut out, don't cut in. The only place that you're going to follow the profile is right along the midline where the two halves are going to join. So it's actually okay to kind of leave it this way until you get the halves joined um, and then you're going to finish shaping the body anyways. So I'm going to do that to the top half. I'm going to cut out the saddle here for the center panel and that'll be the next step. Here you can see I hollowed out the wing saddle area. Um, I'm going to drop the wing in about three quarters of an inch and that'll put the cord line of the wing right along the midline, right along the midline of the fuselage. So I took part of the, the wing bed and made it the same width as the fuselage. Make sure it sits perfectly flat. I'm going to Gorilla Glue that in and while that sits I'm going to get started on the top half of the wing. After that sets up I'm going to hollow this out to match the profile of what I already hollowed out in the fuselage. So that's next. Before we go any further, I want to put these locating pins into the root section of the wing. Okay, uh, you'll see why I need to have the wing aligned before we go any further, but I'm going to um, put goop into the hole and then I'm going to put the locating pin into the hole and let that cure. And then we'll go on to the next step. Here is the wing saddle in place. We got all the Gorilla Glue cleaned up. We cleaned out the middle of the saddle to make room for electronics, batteries, whatever. And I've also attached this string to a pin at the nose. And I'm going to use this string when I'm uh, mounting the wing to kind of measure, I'll measure out at the tip on one side and then I'll make sure and make a mark and then make sure that mark lands at the tip on the other side and that's just gonna make the wing alignment a little bit more precise. Just in case anything wasn't clear in the time lapse, we now have the wing glued in place with Gorilla Glue. The Gorilla Glue is foaming and setting up. 
Um, and then after we got that generally placed in the center, then I wanted to make sure that it, the wing was at a 90 degree angle to the fuselage. And then, um, of course, I did that with the string that is connected with a pan up there at the nose. And then you can see here, all right, let's check on the other side and see if that also matches up with the wingtip. Get this paint can out of the way. And how did we do? Perfect. All right, so our wing should be aligned at 90 degrees to the fuselage, and the cans are making sure everything stays level while the glue sets up, Gorilla Glue sets up, and then we'll be on to the next step. <laughs>